Hey guys, today I'm doing another Q&A all about my terzepatide experience. I just recently took my last shot of terzepatide. I did six months on compound terzepatide, which is the active ingredient in Monjero. I did four months therapeutic at the 2.5 dose and lost 30 pounds. And then I switched to a half maintenance dose for two more months and lost just a couple more pounds. I did my terzepatide journey alongside a high protein diet and regular exercise with strength training. I personally decided to get off the medication, but I'm fully aware that that is not for everyone some people will need to be on this long term. Let's jump into these questions. I'm having a ton of nausea and fatigue just on the 2.5. I am losing weight though. Do you think I should stop or keep going? Of course, talk to your provider, but if you're on the compound, maybe talk to your provider about taking a microdose. Depending on your pharmacy, if you're taking 25 units for that 2.5 dose, maybe talk to your provider about taking 15 units and seeing if you're continuing to lose weight and getting benefits and then also having less side effects. That's one thing I really love about the compounds is that you're able to kind of customize the dosage to what you need. Why did you do half doses for maintenance instead of spreading out your shots for maintenance? So a lot of people on name brand Monjero or Zet Bounce, when they get to maintenance, they start dropping you know down doses to uh, what's a maintenance dose for them and they'll even start spreading out those doses so if you go down to the five maybe you're taking the five like every other week since i was on the compound and i turned out to be kind of a hyper responder i was on the very lowest dose and the very lowest dose was therapeutic for me i decided for maintenance slash weaning to just drop to half doses every single week i didn't have to spread them out because i was on the compound and could just be taking like a lot less and then still getting a lot of the benefits that last month though i did go every other month with my half dose 1.25 was just like 12 units which was just such a small amount that I could have just maybe done like a fourth of a dose um, that last month to even wean more, but that's just kind of how I decided to do it personally. But I did that because I was on the compound, so I was able to just like take a customized amount. I want to switch to compounds to save money, but I'm worried about the statements from Eli Lilly saying compounds aren't safe. I actually made a whole video about this, about compounding pharmacies and their safety. I ultimately decided I feel safe taking compound medicine because compound pharmacies are regulated by the states. They're made by licensed pharmacists, um, but you know your health is important and you're gonna have to make your own decisions. Do you take any supplements? I take vitamin D, a multivitamin, magnesium, and I may start inositol. Yes, and um, actually, I should talk about this because I um, overdid it a little bit. So I do take a multivitamin, which is great. Definitely do that on this journey. But I was kind of um, overdoing it. I was also doing like the BioCare smoothies, which the BioCare smoothies are great. They're smoothies that are just made just for people on GLP ones and then also having like a lot of health foods that have vitamins in it and so when I got my blood work back my blood work was perfect except it was a little high in vitamin D <laughs> which I wasn't actually taking um vitamin D specific supplements but I think I was just kind of like doing so many vitamin-y things <laughs> so do watch that you don't overdo it but supplementing on this journey is a great thing um taking a multivitamin or doing like the biocare smoothies twice a day that are packed with vitamins I also found magnesium to be helpful for like sleep and gut health. I take magnesium. Um, those are the two ones I really did. Um, on my journey, I would also do protein and fiber supplements a lot. So protein, either one of the BioCare smoothies or just a regular protein smoothie or a protein bar or two because I wanted to hit, you know, around 100 grams of protein a day if possible. And so that's really hard to do when you're on a GLP-1 if you're not doing some sort of like supplemental protein, like protein powder or a protein bar. Also fiber, like a fiber drink or fiber bar can be really helpful on this journey for your gut health. What changes did you notice since going on a maintenance dose? I mean, I was definitely hungrier. Um, and at first I really hated it. Some of the food noise was coming back. I was just thinking about food more and needing food more. But at the same time, I was having like a lot more energy. When I was on my therapeutic dose, I tried to, you know, always eat at least 1200 calories a day, aim for around 100 grams of protein. 
I tried to be really good, but once um, I did drop to the maintenance dose and I was hungrier, it was obviously a lot easier to eat. I had a, I definitely had more energy because I was giving my body more nutrients. I did try to stick to the high protein diet. I did not love that I was hungrier and needing food a lot. I did not love the food noise coming back and being hungrier, but I did rather quickly within a week or two of dropping to the maintenance dose, come up with some strategies. So I've done intermittent fasting throughout this journey, which has been really, really helpful. When I was on my therapeutic dose, I felt like it kind of helped prevent any like GI upset by giving my body just longer to digest. And then once I dropped to my maintenance dose, I feel like it helped me um, control any hunger or urges or food noise by keeping my eating within a window. I only do intermittent fasting 14 to 16 hours, but having um, my eating within a window and trying to eat really high protein, I can only eat so much, you know, and it does kind of calm the food noise when I'm eating high protein meals three times a day just within that eating window. Besides some of the food noise and hunger coming back, um, the really the only other thing is I have had more hormonal acne through here. The medicine really helped that. So it did just recently clear up a little. I've been trying to work on my skincare routine and also eat really clean because I think that helps. My PCOS, just like uncontrolled bleeding and cramping and like that kind of stuff seems to be pretty fine. And I think a lot of it is because I did get an IUD a few months ago. You said you did intermittent fasting. Do you work out in the morning while fasting? Yes, I do when I can. Uh, I go to the office to work three days a week. And so those days I don't, I do intermittent fasting still, but I just bring my breakfast to work and then like around nine or 10, I'll eat it. On my days that I'm home, I love to work out while fasting. I always make sure I'm really, really hydrated. So I have a big tall glass of water. I usually have a black coffee and I usually am pretty fine. I have had one or two times while on a GLP-1 journey where I felt a little lightheaded and then I just kind of like gave myself a break and backed off. But since I've dropped to the maintenance dose, I really haven't noticed any like lightheaded feelings, especially if I have that big glass of water and a cup of coffee and I work out on an empty stomach, which we know that can really help with fat burn. I love doing that for so many reasons. One, it distracts me so that I'm not thinking about food and I'm not thinking about the facts that I'm fasting. Two, I'm obviously, I'm not bloated at all while I'm working out. And three, I'm getting my workout in first thing in the morning. So then it's just like done and I don't have to worry about it. So yes, I do. There has been one or two times when I was on my therapeutic dose that I did get lightheaded and I just kind of backed off. I am finally losing weight on the meds and I'm so excited. I used to be able to work out a lot when I wanted to lose weight, but that didn't seem to work anymore in my 30s. Have you noticed things getting harder as you get older? Absolutely. So when I was, you know, in my early 20s or something, I could just like go to the gym a little more, make very minimal lifestyle changes and instantly drop five to 10 pounds. In my 30s, I'm 32. After having babies, oh my goodness, my body is just different. Like diet matters so much now. I always tried to eat semi healthy, but I could always like, I could, I could eat pizza or like carbs and I'd be fine. Now, I mean, I can, but I just have to use a lot of moderation with it. And diet combines with exercise and specifically strength training is something I've learned that I think is very important as you get older. This one's interesting. Why don't you do as many before and afters like other people who post about this stuff? So, I mean, I have posted before and afters and I'm not like terribly against them for me. Um, I think they're really inspiring to see from other people, but for me, um, I don't know. I just don't love it. I feel like that Madison was doing her best. She had two little girls and her hormones were seriously out of whack and she has a heart condition and she was trying to eat healthy and exercise and it was not working and she was really, really frustrated. And I don't, 
And I don't want to be like throwing shade at that Madison. And I'm really glad for where I am now. And I like that I'm being open and honest about taking this medicine and my wellness journey and everything. But I don't love doing before and afters for me personally. Does that make sense? I don't know. Maybe not. When other people do them, I find them very inspiring. And if they want to do them and they're inspiring, that's great. But yes, that, that is a good point. I don't do much before and after contents. And that's kind of why I just like, I don't love it. Also, um, I lost, you know, just over 30 pounds. And so my journey isn't as dramatic as other people's. Um, I think I had every right to take this medicine and my providers thought I needed it and I'm glad I did, but I didn't have this like dramatic 100 pound weight loss either. I'm nearing my goal weight and I'm starting to titrate down to a maintenance dose. I'd ultimately like to get off the meds, but I'm so scared about the weight coming back. Any advice? I mean, I absolutely feel you. The fear of the weight coming back is real. The research that we currently have is not great. I think talk to your provider about your specific situation. We know that people with chronic obesity and diabetes a lot of times need to be on this long term. Women who are taking this for PCOS who are able to maybe balance their hormones and maybe heal their body through this process, it may be a different story. I know I've heard some encouraging stories from that. That's kind of why I'm deciding to try. I do get side effects on the meds and my body is in a much, much healthier place than it was at the beginning of my journey. So I feel like my personal health story is a little different than the research we have. And I also know a couple people personally who have similar stories to me that have been able to keep a lot of the weight off. So I think talk to your provider about your specific situation um, and then make the decision that you feel is best for you you can always get back on, you know, like if you get off of it for a while and it's just not working out, you can get back on. I get so dizzy now. Is there anything I can do? Definitely let your provider know. They may want to order some blood work, make sure your blood sugar is okay. Um, some things that can help that helps me having an electrolyte drink or two can really help. Your body really flushes out electrolytes while on this medicine and you're eating a lot less. So adding some electrolytes back in can make you feel a lot better, less dizzy, and also more energy. Because if you have that like crazy fatigue feeling, sometimes an electrolyte drink can just like totally turn your day around. Did you skip shots when you traveled or went on vacation so you can enjoy more food or alcohol? I, um, when I was on my therapeutic doses, there was one weekend where I just delayed my shots. Um, so I would normally take them on a Thursday or Friday and I just waited and I was going out of town for like a long weekend and I didn't want to have like many side effects. And so I waited and I took it on Sunday. And then over the next few weeks, I just like did eight days or something. So that it, I eventually got back to Wednesdays, which was the days I liked. Um, but I did do that once. So it was ended up being around 10 days. I never actually did like every other week until that last month when I was weaning off. Okay, that was it for this video. I clumped some questions together that were similar so that I wasn't repeating myself too much. If you have any questions you want me to answer in the next Q&A, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you want to chat at all in the comments, feel free to. If you want to share your story where you're at, feel free to leave that in the comments. I love to chat. I use the telehealth join Fridays. I highly recommend them. They're really great about providing nutritional and exercise support. They have some of the lowest compound prices that you will find anywhere. They can also order the name brands to be sent to your local pharmacies. They have an insurance liaison to try to get them covered. My coupon code will get to you some money off your first month membership. And that coupon code is Madison. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Remember to subscribe and I will see you in my next video.